on stage. Sorry for the eight, nine minutes uh, delay here. But we had Vlad Marin, you know, from Airbus, who will tell us a little bit, some story about a uh, uh, huge scale API uh, monetization. Hi, Vlad, how are you? Hi, Mehdi. Uh, I'm very excited to be here. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah, we're glad to have you. Can you share your screen and start your 20 minute presentation? Absolutely. Sharing my screen now. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so uh, hi, everyone, and thank you for joining uh, this session. Um, my name is Vlad. As Maddie introduced me, I'm a product manager and business owner at Airbus for a project called Skywise, a data platform for the aviation world. And um, by the end of this presentation, I'll be uh, sharing with you some of the challenges and lessons that we've learned in our API journey. And uh, notably, I will, I will give a bit of hints of why uh, all the platforms might not be, uh, like the Uber or Airbnb one, um, why you might not always know uh, the customer needs that well, and why uh, you shouldn't settle your business model before you settle your APIs. But to begin with, um, a quick look at the aviation world and a quick introduction to the Skywise project. Um, I think most of us think of the aviation world as an industry that it's very old, uh, that it um, has a lot of physics and um, aerodynamics and thermodynamics uh, involved in it products that have a life cycle of more than 40 years. And usually we don't think of it as, uh, we don't think of this industry of being similar to digital giants like the GAFAs. Um, however, an insider view on that would uh, show that we actually record up to 400,000 parameters per aircraft. And uh, that generates about up to uh, two terabytes of data per flight hour. Um, in a peak of the aviation in 2019, in a pre-COVID area, we were facing up to 230,000 flights per day, uh, for example, in July. And usually at any given time, there are more than uh, 20,000 aircrafts mid-flight all around the world. So generally all that information and all that data gets recorded somewhere, uh, but it's scattered across thousands of IT systems at airlines, at airports, at suppliers, including at manufacturers like Airbus. So what we did in 2015, when we understood that there's more to the value of data that we were actually extracting, we started our digital transformation with a use case on our own final assembly lines. So uh, we went to our colleagues and we wanted to see whether we can improve um, the production rate of the A350, one of our uh, aircrafts, uh, by carefully analyzing and making a better use of data. After a couple of months, we were successful and we increased uh, the production rate by a staggering 33%. And from that moment on, we knew that uh, breaking the data silos was key to uh, liberating the value of data and to move on into the digital transformation. So we set about a couple of years ago, uh, a, a grand ambition called Skywise, a platform uh, where the entire aviation ecosystem could participate not just manufacturers like Airbus, but also airlines and airports, authorities, um, and the entire supply chain, uh, and even third-party app developers that would develop applications and distribute them to interested customers. So our vision about Skywise was to bring visibility into, um, into operations and cross-domain functions, and to increase the value that we gather through data, and innovate and open up new business lines as well, not just for us, but for everybody in the aviation industry. So this platform, um, essentially, Skywise has three main layers, a strong data foundation, where we gather and ingest data, both from Airbus um, systems, but also from uh, airlines and suppliers and all the other actors. On top of that, um, an analytic suite of applications that allow us to drill down in the information, allow us to explore business hypotheses, to write machine learning, uh, automate data pipelines. Um, and on top of that, uh, the third layer where we can build graphical applications, um, user interfaces that we can give to specific teams or technicians to focus on their specific tasks. So this is um, a very general um, uh, foundation of a data lake, um, um, as, as you might find it in a, any other data platform. Now, a brief uh, view of where we are today, five years later, 
we've uh, connected more than 130 airlines uh, that represent more than 9,000 um, aircraft from around the world. Um, thousands of users use the platform every single day. And uh, we've accumulated so far 12 petabytes of data. Now, the key metric here that will be important for our, this presentation, it's precisely this, um, 12 petabytes of data. Um, we've been successful in deploying the vision and building the platform, um, but 12 petabytes of data seem to pose a lot of challenges for us to build APIs. Notably, as the inflow of data comes, um, we are having a 24 seven ingestion, uh, depending on some data sources we're ingesting on an hour by hour basis. More and more customers sign every single flight that happens everywhere um, uh, from our customers is being recorded in the platform. Um, there's a huge variety of data formats. Um, we're dealing with structured data from databases, but uh, that's easy. We're also doing with, uh, dealing with documents and time series and unstructured data in general. Um, and even the metadata from one customer to another is different. Um, unconsistent values where customers do not name the same parameters the same way, although they depict the same reality uh, in aviation. And we needed to, we were facing this, this uh, important volume of data, but we needed to offer customers uh, standardized access to data, notably through APIs. We needed scalable solutions that can apply to each and every one of them uh, in a consistent manner. Uh, we also had this vision of a Skywise store, just like an app store, where um, developers can develop once and distribute their apps multiple times without needing to do the data integration every single time. And, and moreover, uh, we needed to ensure an effective data governance compliance. And if every single data set is named differently, we would have a hard time uh, applying uh, such data governance rules. So. To deal with that, we um, um, inevitably had to bring some structure to the data. Um, as we were ingesting data, we um, set pipelines to cleanse and format it, to organize it by functional domain, um, and to apply on ontology. Now, we call it the Skywise ontology, and it's a way of modeling the data um, in a way that it's understandable both by humans and by machines. It preserves the relationships between objects and their meaning in the real life. Uh, and so this provided us with a great structure to build APIs, APIs that would be standardized. We could now slice and dice and pick the parameters that we would like to expose through APIs, and those would be identical from one customer to another. Now, to give you an example of, of uh, how those APIs would look like, um, imagine some of the objects that, um, like aircraft or flight or event, those are notions that the entire aviation industry understands, uh, but now they are modeled in a unique way and standardized. So developers now and, and customers can have easy access to uh, um, information like um, a defect that might have occurred in a particular flight uh, with a particular aircraft, or maybe how long a flight uh, took or how much fuel there was uh, in the aircraft before and after the flight and so on and so forth. So in essence, um, we, the, the 12 petabytes of data, we had to bring some structure to, uh, to that amount of information. And we ended up having those standard APIs, as we call them, which were unitary enough to describe um, objects and notions that everybody understood, but programmable enough so that developers can choose and pick only some parameters that they were interested in. They brought mobility because they broke the data silos in the industry, and now mobile applications um, could easily access data no matter where on the tarmac, no matter where in the world. Uh, and they were great for developers. They were reusable. And if you would use them to develop an app, you would be able to distribute it um, to everyone. Um, and this is generally a catalog that we would continue to uh, increase by uh, expand by adding more and more experienced APIs. However, um, we kind of face another challenge at this point in time. And um, to illustrate that, I, I, might, I might use some uh, some pictures that, uh, um, you know, given that it's uh, noon uh, uh, lunchtime now in Western Europe, those pictures might do a bit of harm. But uh, for the comparison, uh, I think it's it's quite useful to compare uh, what happened with the with the food industry. Um, now, the standard APIs that we've built, 
um, they bring great consistency. They cover um, a lot of use cases, but they don't cover all of them as we came to realize. And generally developers um, uh, appreciate them, but maybe customers might have other needs as well. So just like uh, with the fast food um, industry, you kind of get the same experience everywhere in the world. You know what to expect and, uh, and you enjoy the consistency, but it's definitely not the only thing that you would be eating. So much like a market, um, every customer has its own unique needs. And the more we engage with customers and we, the more we spend time with them to implement APIs and, and ensure success, we realize that they all have unique business needs. They all have to slice and dice the data differently. And a big airline might not be exactly like a small airline and so on and so forth. Now, some of those lessons weren't that obvious, although you could argue that it, it, it has been for years that we've been uh, in the airline industry, in the aviation industry. And yet the APIs showed us parts of, uh, of the business needs that we, we ignored so far. So what we knew is that we were facing a new challenge, um, a challenge that um, uh, through which we would have to provide our customers, we'd have to enable them to be able to build basically their own APIs. If we do not know what those use cases are, or if we cannot cover them all, uh, then why not uh, empower our users to build their own custom APIs while doing that in a secure and scalable manner? So. Um, this is where we are today. We are experimenting with custom APIs. Um, now, there are a lot of benefits, of course. Um, those custom APIs um, do help customers to uh, um, develop and maintain uh, their, own, uh, their own APIs. They're great for data scientists because by now, customers don't only use the raw data that they've ingested in the platform but they've also derived that data into new results and key findings. And that data, those key findings and insights can now be pushed back into operational systems and they can support decision-making processes. So this is where custom APIs are vital for that. Uh, and overall, we can say there are, um, we have a better adaptability uh, in face of an ever-evolving aviation market, especially during those times with COVID. Um, but however, it, it does bring um, some new challenges that we have to we have to face. Uh, notably, we have to cope very well in between data privacy and security. Uh, we have to take into account uh, the performance of the APIs and the scalability, even if we don't own the code of those APIs, because it's no longer us who are developing them. Um, and also, there are more fundamental questions regarding to how much data should be extracted through APIs? Where are the boundaries? Uh, how would smarter or intelligent APIs look like? Um, as gatekeepers of the platform, we must ensure a great experience to our customers. Um, we think such a tool is necessary and we're experimenting, trying to see whether we were right or not. Um, but as gatekeepers, we must um, maintain a great experience, even though we don't always have uh, ownership of the code, or we don't always know what the, the customers would do. So those are quite some tricky questions that we are, we are uh, facing right now. Um, and it made us think um, of what type of platform we really are. And as we realized that we didn't always know um, the customer needs, and we, um, uh, we didn't really know what APIs should we build? We built some, but not all that were needed. We kind of um, gave it a thought of what type of platform we are. And so the conclusion we reached is that eventually we can say there are two types of data platforms out there. There are the transaction-oriented platforms, and then there are the content-oriented platforms. Now, transaction-oriented platforms are like PayPal, Airbnb, and Uber. Uh, they focus on matching a consumer with a provider of service. Uh, the matching intention is usually one-to-one. -one. Uh, one Uber traveler ma gets matched with one Uber driver. And there are, there are a specific number of APIs for a specific number of transactions. You can order an Uber, change the address, rate the driver, or perhaps cancel the ride. Uh, but that's pretty much it. And it's the same for an Airbnb, and it's the same for money transfer. 
Um, so those are platforms who have a very um, well-defined set of APIs around their transaction, and they must optimize that transaction. But on the other side, content-oriented platforms are platforms where the most valuable asset is the one is actually the content and consuming the content. Um, we do have APIs to embed a YouTube video, um, to play, pause, add to a playlist, like or dislike. But what we want most out of YouTube is to consume the video, to watch the video, consume that content. And so we, it, it seemed obvious for us that we were actually more in this category with Skywise rather than the first one. And that's why custom APIs made sense because we did develop um, standard APIs for a specific number of use cases. But beyond that, um, we had to let uh, the customers the freedom to build their own custom APIs. And I'm going to illustrate it with an example. An example for YouTube, for instance. If you are um, a music producer or a video producer, and say you want to do a very uh, modern video, you might be tempted to go on YouTube and ask via an API something like, what are the five most predominant colors in the top 10 most uh, popular videos in the pop dance genre in 2020? Right, so those are all parameters that you're interested in, uh, but there is no API that can answer that because such an API would um, require to go inside the content of data and analyze it, extract the, the information you're searching for, and give it to you back. It's very complicated to cover such use cases. It would be possibly, uh, probably uh, impossible for YouTube to um, cover all such use cases. Um, and yet, this is where the custom APIs on our side would intervene to give the user um, the, the freedom to build themselves those kinds of, uh, of APIs. Now, another aspect that um, it seemed obvious to us is that there is always sort of a balance that we have to meet in between what platform futures we would like to build or we should build and what the market desires. And so, in a kind of very simple graph where on the vertical axis you get the, the market desirability and on the horizontal axis how hard or easy it is to build such a feature, there are kind of like four major zones. What seems to be easy and in low demand, probably uh, platform users should do it themselves because it's not that popular and it's easy. But what suddenly it's easy to build and highly desired that's something that platform owners should probably build as a feature. And this is where standard APIs cover a lot of use cases, but not all. Um, the next, the next uh, area is things that are much harder to build, but still are in high demand. So this is a very interesting space because this is where the next innovation happens. Um, this is where you get the first mover opportunity. Um, we think this is where custom APIs intervene. And we think there can be a, they can be a game changer for our type of platform. Um, and, and we think that we're, we hope at least that we're going to be uh, extremely successful. Our customers will be developing a lot of APIs and covering a lot of their needs with, those, uh, with such a feature. And the fourth, um, uh, the fourth area of focus would be things that are extremely hard to build and in low demand right now. Um, I guess, an example from the digital industry would be quantum computing, for instance. Uh, it's extremely hard. There is some demand, but not that much. Um, so perhaps in the future, quantum computing would move towards more demand, slightly easier, and then more and more towards the easier part and high demand. Uh, but for such an area, platform owners should rather decide whether it's too soon or not for them to invest in such early innovation. So. To wrap up, I think the and to come back to the main three uh, messages that, that uh, I had to share with you is that not plat not all platforms are alike. And while we usually tend to give examples of um, of Uber and Airbnbs and other, not all the platforms that we're building uh, and not all the APIs can compare with those players. Sometimes, in the case of content-oriented platforms, building the APIs is much harder. Uh, the customer needs vary a lot from one to another, and um, they are not that reusable from one customer to another, the APIs. 
So we have to be extremely careful about that when, when designing uh, a platform. Not all of them are equal. Uh, next, uh, this was somewhat surprising to us. Um, I think the best way to know your customer in the API industry is to let the APIs lead that understanding. When we were spending time uh, on the field with the customer and um, asking about their pain points, uh, it became obvious to us that we were ignoring some of their needs. Uh, we didn't think of them. So the APIs are actually a very good tool to investigate and learn more about your customer. It's important to know your customer and APIs can actually be a very powerful tool. So the key lesson that we learned here is focus on the customer's biggest pain points and solve those 10 times better because you would understand more about your customers like that than by thinking you know its industry. And finally, the business model of a platform. Well, when you first establish the business model, um, you will then create the APIs that go with your business model. But it turns out that the APIs your customer might need uh, will be different. And those different APIs will influence back your business model. So don't settle for your business model too soon. Uh, adjust both the APIs and the business model constantly. Uh, don't stick with the wrong APIs just because the business model came first. Um, that will put a lot of stress and, and challenges for the monetization as well, because you have to rethink it, but it's worthwhile in the long run. So I think th this, this sums up the, the key challenges that we faced so far in a petabyte uh, scale data platform. And, and from 12 petabytes, um, we're going to get even more bigger. And, and the more we will, um, um, you know, the more we will onboard customers and different needs, uh, the more we will be learning lessons and perhaps, uh, in future years, we'll be back here to share them with you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Vlad. Uh, really insightful. And I invite everybody who wants to uh, see in practice what you understand by, you know, this mix between uh, 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 like standardized versus custom APIs and how to uh, manage it to go on Skywise uh, uh, APIs. And also people are interested into the, uh, uh, the industry about leveraging this data, right? And being able to leverage it the way they want, right? Uh, so yeah, thank you very much, Vlad. Uh, we're a little bit thank over you. time, so we'll and it's it's soon as the lunch. I just want to be sure our, our next speaker has also the time to uh, to speak. It's also a speaker from let's say the airline whatever industry. It's a Stein Banier. Yes. Thank you very much, Vlad, and looking thank forward. You very much. Uh,